I want to show you how to deal with unexpectedly large file sizes when writing reports in Microsoft Word, especially those that include photos or other images. If we look at this example file, we have a very small word processing file. It's a report just getting started, but we want to add some photos to it. We may have some meaningful photos that relate to this report that we want to include. And so we might start to put them into our document. Here we have a photograph of one part of a property which we consider to be important. We might put some other details of the property in as images. And these might be interspersed in amongst the text. And they might show various aspects that we consider contribute to the value of the property or its investment attractiveness or what have you. We may also have other images that we want to include, uh, such as screenshots or scans of things like reports or statements uh, relating to the property. Here we're going to simply add a screenshot of some text. And now we're going to save our report with its images. We're going to save it with a different file name. And we'll see what effect our images have on the file size. We started off with a file of 24 kilobytes, and now we've got a file of 3.1 megabytes, about 15 times larger. And that's with only a handful of images. However, do those images really help us? Well, the answer is no, uh, not to the extent of increasing our file size. We will probably find that as we write our report, we may resize our images to do different things in different parts of our, uh, our, our file, and that's all appropriate. We might have text in amongst all that and so on. We can save that and see how resizing affects the file size. And we can see here that by resizing our photographs down to something more reasonable, we've reduced about a third. We've taken about a megabyte out of our file size. However, we still consider it to be too large. The next step we may want to look at is compressing the photographs. At present, these photographs have been taken by a typical telephone uh, phone camera. And so each one is several megabytes. Do we really need several megabytes of photographs in a thumbnail photograph, which is there in your report to show some little bit of detail? The answer is no. At best, we want this photograph to be able to be printed so that it doesn't look blotchy and poor quality in your report, but it's not going to be blown up and hung on some wall somewhere in a photographic gallery. And so we don't need the high res, which normally comes out of modern cameras. What we can do is compress these photos. By, to compress them, we simply click on one of the photographs and you'll notice that in Word, there is a menu item that comes up here, picture format. We go to picture format and we come across to a rather obscure little icon here doesn't say what it is, but it's very important for our purposes. Compress pictures. Click on that. We can either compress simply the picture we're looking at. And we don't want to choose that because we want to compress all of them. And we can also choose if you want to delete the cropped areas of pictures. Uh, that's not so relevant in our case, but in some cases it might be useful as well. It basically takes off those parts from the file which aren't actually visible in the report. The next thing we can look at is what resolution we want. 
we can choose a number of resolutions. I'm going to start off by looking at web resolution. That's 150 pixels per inch. And we'll compress to that all of the photographs and we'll save as another file name. And we'll see what that does to the file size. And now we've reduced our file size from 2 meg down to 600 kilobytes. Almost a 75%, maybe 70% saving in size. At that resolution, it's still actually higher resolution than you will need to print at this size on a typical office printer. So we can even go in again and we will compress once more. Now we'll come down to the email resolution, which in many cases is appropriate for this purpose. We will save our file once more. And save. And now our file size has come down to about half of what it was previously, about 300 kilobytes, or you know, only about a bit more than a tenth of what we started with. The point here is that we may have a lot more photographs than this. You might be starting off with a file size of 5, 10, maybe even 20 megabytes. But by using file uh, photograph uh, compression, you're able to bring it down to somewhere in the vicinity of about you know, 10 to 20 percent of your starting size without losing its effectiveness as a report. That makes it far easier to attach to an email or to enter into other data transfer uh, systems. Another tool you can use to transfer larger files is to transfer them using cloud services such as Dropbox. This, uh, these files are currently stored in a Dropbox folder. Dropbox is a free cloud service which enables you to store files on the cloud, which makes it very easy to transfer them across your devices, say between your computer and your phone and your tablet. It also has functionality for transferring files, sending them to other people. Here, we'll look at transferring. We want to send our original file, the two megabyte uh, file, across to somebody, we're going to use email. But what we're going to do is copy a Dropbox link. So we've right clicked on the file name, select copy Dropbox link. Then we go to our email system and we might be wanting to send that file to our friend Fred. And all we have to do is paste in that link and now, when that email is sent, when Fred opens up his emails and clicks that link, it will download that file, even though in this case it might be 2 megabytes or it could be 20 megabytes. The point is that using a Dropbox link, you're able to transfer very large files. And so if compression is not suitable for you, then emailing the Dropbox link is also an effective way of sending these larger files. To um, get a Dropbox account, it's free. Well, certainly there is a very useful free version. Like a lot of things, if you want to pay a monthly subscription, you can get more bells and whistles. Uh, but for a free Dropbox account, which is a very handy thing for a lot of file exchange, You'll find a uh, link to get a Dropbox account in the details box underneath this video.